Hi, and welcome back to Museum at Home. Now this week we are exploring the frozen ice sheets of the Antarctic, along with some of the 20th century's most famous explorers. The early years of the 20th century were a time of exploration, of scientific discovery and amazing feats of survival. Let's find out a little bit more about this period with the help of some objects which are kept at the National Maritime Museum in London. Now, there's something about exploring, about discovery, about travelling to new places that really grabs us. And there's something about seeing things that we haven't seen before, which people really love. It's exciting and we can uncover a wealth of information, knowledge that we didn't have previously. And at the end of the Victorian era, in the early 20th century, there were lots and lots of countries that wanted to discover new places, to map them, to locate them, and to better understand a bit more about them, to make some discoveries, and to reach new heights. And Antarctica was seen as one of these vast, mysterious lands and scientists, explorers and geographers from lots and lots of different countries all went on expeditions to the Antarctic. We call this the race to the pole because all of these different scientists and geographers and expedition teams were all going towards the South Pole. But how can we learn more about these amazing journeys? Well, we can look at objects and artefacts to find out a bit more. Sometimes we can examine objects that explorers took with them on their journeys, pieces of equipment and instruments that they might have used. Sometimes we can look at paintings that explorers might have made on their journeys. We can also look at letters that they might have sent to their families or entries in diaries or logbooks that they kept. And early in the 20th century, we can even look at black and white photographs. They can tell us an awful lot about these amazing journeys. So let's start by having a look at a photograph. Now, photographs are really useful historical sources. We very often say that a picture is worth a thousand words. I think that that is very often true. Photographs can capture a moment in history. So what can you see in this moment here? What does this photograph show? Well, let's have a think about what questions we could ask as historians. Who? Who were these people? What are they wearing? And can their clothes give us any clues as to who they are and what they're doing? What can we see in the background of the photograph? When the photograph was taken, who took it? Why was it taken? Was it to commemorate an occasion, to celebrate an achievement? These are just some of the questions that we could ask to learn a bit more about this photograph. Very handily, we are given a rather large clue with this photograph because the names of the people on it are written beneath the picture. Ernest Shackleton, Captain Robert Scott and Dr Edward Wilson. Now these three men are on their way home after a gruelling, challenging journey trying to reach the South Pole. How would you describe these men in this photograph? Are they clean and tidy and very smart looking? Or are they weather-worn, tired and tanned? Do they look happy or do they look miserable? Now it's often very hard to read people's expressions in photographs and particularly in black and white photographs where it's sometimes less clear to make out people's expressions and faces. But we can look at their rather bushy beards and their complexions and we can probably assume that these men have been living in rather rough conditions for some time. Have a look behind them. What can you see? Can you spot an object of some kind? Even though this is a black and white photograph, you can just about make out a large object behind them. 
with a flag draped on it. Now that object is one of the sledges which these men use on their journey to the Antarctic and the object draped over it is their sledge flag. Shackleton, Scott and Wilson are three of the famous explorers of that time and on this particular expedition they had set a farthest south record. So even though they hadn't quite made it all the way to the South Pole, they had gone in this expedition further south towards the Pole than any other team had gone previously. And they worked very hard during this expedition, discovering different features of the landscape, mapping them so that people would know what the landscape looked like, and recording all the information and all the discoveries that they made. But what kind of instruments and what kind of objects would they have used on a journey like this? Well, let's look at an example and see what we can discover. Have a look at this object here. Now let's go back to our key question words. What? What is it? What does it look like? What is it made from? What are the markings and the different dials on it? What's the writing inside the lid? Why? Why was it made? Why is it important enough to be taken on a dangerous polar expedition? How? How does it work? And how might it be used by the scientists and the geographers on this expedition? So what do you think that this object could be used for? What does it look like? Well, I think it looks a bit like a clock or a watch that you might wear on your wrist. You can see the clock face and you can see that it has clock hands. But this looks much more impressive than a common or garden watch. You can see more than one dial on the face and it comes in a strong protective wooden case. Why is that? Well, this object is something called a marine chronometer. And it was an incredibly clever device that was used by sailors, by explorers and by scientists in the early 20th century. Now it is a clock that is so precise, so accurate, that it allowed sailors to work out their longitude, how far east or west they were. So it was a very important piece of equipment on a ship because it helped them to navigate where they were. If they wanted to use something like a clock, why wasn't a normal clock an option for sailors? Well, other clocks had a pendulum, something that swings from side to side to keep time. But on a ship which rocks and moves, that just won't keep an accurate record of the time. So the marine chronometer was invented. Now have a closer look at this chronometer. Can you see the writing on the inside of the wooden lid? Can you make out what it might say? Well, it's a note signed by Ernest Shackleton himself, the explorer, and it states that this marine chronometer was used by the expedition team on the Antarctic expedition that lasted from 1914 to 1917. Now this chronometer played a very important role in getting Shackleton and his team back on their feet after something rather terrifying happened. Their ship called Endurance became trapped in ice in the Antarctic. Now that was a very, very dangerous situation that the scientists had to deal with. Have a look at this photograph. Now you can see the ship, the Endurance, surrounded by huge pieces of ice. And if you look very carefully on the rigging and the mass of the ship, you can see that even that is covered in ice. Now, how do you think that the expedition group would have felt when their ship became trapped? Now, after the ship sank in the freezing waters of the Antarctic, the expedition group faced many months of danger. They floated about on ice surfaces until they decided to use the ship's lifeboats to sail to Elephant Island, an icy island just off the coast of the Antarctic. Now that must have been an amazing 
but a terrifying journey. Sailing through the freezing Antarctic waters in an open-topped, very small boat. And after that, when they got to Elephant Island, Ernest Shackleton decided to take that small lifeboat and sail it another 800 miles to a place called South Georgia. And that was a very brave decision. Our chronometer here was used on that lifeboat that took the group all the way to Elephant Island and then on to South Georgia to continue their journey. Shackleton and his team would have used this marine chronometer to work out their longitude and to navigate the route onwards. Without it, they would have been rather lost at sea in very dangerous conditions in icy water. Now this object therefore tells us a very exciting story all about Antarctic expeditions. Now, if you'd like to do some activities based on the topic of Antarctic expeditions and explorers, click on the link in the description of this YouTube video or head to the Museum at Home website. Next time, join me in visiting the home of a very famous artist, Vincent van Gogh. So, see you next time for Museum at Home.